So whoever is slicing and dicing for publishing to YouTube, I want to start not with my talk, but with something that Slava didn't point out. I mean, his talk was really funny. But you guys remember this slide? I know we talked about this is not a pig's nose, this is an outlet. I was like, please, he has to show. <laughs> it would have been so perfect. And this, of course, is the problem with duct typing and why we like strong types, because not a good idea. Okay, now this is the beginning of my talk. <laughs> Hello. My name is Kevin Moore, um, proud resident of Seattle. And you can tell the Seattle people by their muted statements. Most of them are just blinded by the sun outside, so they're unable to see that I'm talking. Um, you can find me, I'm Kevin Moore everywhere. I'm a product manager on the Dart team. And I help out with the Angular packages and the build packages and generally just the package ecosystem. I care a lot about it. Talk to uh, Martin from Denmark about how often I send him random pull requests for little things. He's like, really? Don't you have anything better to do than to fix the formatting on Google APIs off? I was like, no, it's not formatted. It must be formatted. Um, so I care a lot about packages and building good packages. And that's the talk today. This is a quiz. So I want you guys all to build amazing packages. Um, from the beginning, Dart was open sourced. Um, we're an ECMA standard, as Tim pointed out. All of our code's on GitHub, which we love. And we want everyone else to join us doing this. We've done a bunch of work to improve the package site. We just launched the package site uh, December of last year. Has anyone noticed that we've updated the pub site? Are you liking the new design? Shout out to Isvan if you're watching. He did a bunch of great work on the, uh, the package site. No, and the reason we invest so much in this is because we care about community. Um, we realize we can't build everything ourselves. We want your help and people watching at home, your help to build a great dark ecosystem. And so we need you to go build packages. And ideally, they would be amazing packages. Um, and so I'm here to help you with that. So this talk is three easy to remember rules for perfect dark packages, which of course, Now, you might be asking why I did this. And the reason is there's no bull emoticon. There's a cow emoticon, but I knew there was the guys from uh, Iowa here, and they can tell the difference. So I went with an alternative. Um, I could have been classy in the cargo cult reference, but I thought this is more you know, from where I'm from. Um, it's really difficult. You know, it's not a simple. There's no simple three easy rules. It's all complex things. Um, but thankfully, we have a lot of good documentation. We have a lot of great tools. And today, I'm here to tell you about some of those. So let's start with the basics. And obviously the first one is don't panic. Um, you know, there are a lot of things to think about here. Um, it's like writing good code. There's no simple recipe. Uh, but we try to hold your hand through a lot of the things. Just spend some time reading the documentation, using the tools we've given you, and you'll have a lot of success. In fact, if you go into IntelliJ, or I'm sure VS Code, and you go new Dart project, or new Flutter pack, uh, project, we do a very good job of making sure we set you up with a canonical package with things in the right directories and the right files you need, the right entries in your pub spec. In some cases, you need to go and uncommon line, but we try to set you up for success from the beginning. The second piece of advice is find a friend. Um, Bob made a comment earlier that it's so much easier emceeing with someone else on stage, and I totally agree. Um, uh, um, you can ask him later what he said. Uh, <laughs> so, Having someone to work with you on anything is really nice, especially with a package. You know, I've made, you know, I'm occasionally will write a bug, and so having someone review the code is kind of nice to make sure I, I catch myself with bad formatting. And obviously, as a package gets more popular, you have to deal with issues and pull requests, like people find things that are broken or people want new features. And so having someone to work with to handle the issues and the pull requests um, is a great way to make sure you find success. And so don't go it alone. Find a friend if you can. And use best practices. We spent a lot of time, actually Bob has done a bunch of work on this, um, Kathy and a number of others, creating a good set of really good guidelines and documentation around just good ways to write Dart code. Go read them. We have an effective Dart guide. Um, and the two rules here are actually you know, great things to start with. Consistent and brief, in general, is really good. Um, this is an amazing document. It's actually a relatively quick read and just gives you good things to think about in terms of how do you name classes, how do you name methods, those coming from C-sharp, where Tim's sitting, you know, methods are lower, are camel cased, and so how do you make sure you do those things correctly? Um, we cover all of that. When should I use positional arguments versus named arguments? These are just good things to keep in mind, and we have really good documents to go through a lot of it. 
We also have conventions about package layout. So when you're thinking about publishing a package, where do I put my library code? Where do I put my tests? Um, we have it all documented. It's really accessible. This is a great place to start. And so as I said, the tools we give you in IntelliJ and VS Code and other places will set you up with good defaults. Um, but we also have great docs here. And fi finally, follow framework conventions. So a simple example here. In Angular, we generally say you name whatever your component is, XYZ component. In Flutter, you don't. So even though you're extending widget, you don't call yourself the XYZ widget. And so this is a little thing. Um, you know, the only recommendation here is spend time reading the code of the thing you're extending, kind of get an idea for the, the uh, conventions there on how you name methods, how you name classes. This will help all of your users, because really when you build an application or build a package, you wanna make sure that it fits nicely in to the existing ecosystem. So follow any framework conventions that exist. And that's the basics. Tying your shoes. So once you have a package all put together, let's talk about publishing. Again, guess what? We have good doc a guide on this that tells you what you need. So read the docs. Um, it's good before you create a package and name a thousand files and put imports and everything, they actually make sure your package is available. We have this amazing online tool to help you figure out if a package is available. It's called a 404. Um, we should really file an issue. So this is a good pull request if someone wants to contribute. Um, make a funnier 404 if a package isn't available. Um, but you can see that the package isn't available there, um, so I can go publish. And again, if we do a pub publish, we give you a lot of good advice here. So pay attention to what pub tells you if publish doesn't immediately work. And then there are actually some cases where it'll say, are you sure you want to publish? And it'll actually give you a bunch of warnings and errors. It'll tell you if you're missing an import or if you have too, I think it won't tell if you have too many imports, but at least it'll tell you if you have a missing import. So pay attention to this information. It's really useful. Um, and it'll tell you what's required. And again, what you realize is you should have read the docs in the first place. You'd be much better off. Um, the next thing is versioning. And this gets a little tricky. Um, what's great about Dart, at least what I find really great about Dart, is if I'm using someone's you know, data type, let's say there's actually a, a semver package here, so I'm using the version type from that. I know that the version I'm using, if I'm using 15 other packages that have to be used in the version type, they're all the same version type. Um, and other platforms that will remain unnamed, you don't have that certainty. So the fact that you have one version of these classes is really useful, but that means you have to think about versioning and how this all works. And so if I were to give you any advice about thinking about versioning, First is for the things you use, make sure you specify a version range for everything you use. And I'm pretty sure pub is Natalie, Natalie's here, right? Pub won't let you publish unless you have lower and upper constraints, right? You must specify a range to say, these are the, the range of things I use. Um, I'll give you a warning. We, pressure, we should make that in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, because if you say, oh, I support anything greater than two, it's like, sure, are you sure that version three, version four that have never been invented, you will be compatible with those? You don't know. Um, so make sure you do a full range, lower and upper constraint. Be conservative about these. Like, unless you've used that version before, um, make sure you constrain it and you don't claim to support every version of a package um, that ever has been or ever will be. And uh, finally, be careful when you update your version string. This is really important, and we'll talk about maintenance a little bit later, um, but it can cause a lot of problems. If you release a breaking change and you call it a plus one, anyone who uses your package might do pub upgrade and get that version and cause lots of issues. I think even the Dart team on occasion has been guilty of this. Um, it's a tricky thing to do. The only thing I can say is, going back to the, um, the point about having a friend, these are good things to be sanity checked when you, before you hit publish. So let's do a quiz quick. We have a lot of people who've used Dart for a while. Natalie, you're not allowed to answer these because she wrote the version solver. Um, <laughs> that's cheating. Okay, so I have a version constraint here, hat 1.1.0. Now don't yell out, but think to yourself, which versions are contained in that version range? All right? I stumped someone yesterday, a Googler, it was funny. Is that what you got? Oh. So hat 1.1.0 means anything greater than or equal to 1.1.0 and anything less than 2.0. So this is a great shorthand. And again, once you want to support many breaking change versions of a package, it's actually a nice shorthand. You know that once you move beyond hat syntax and you have to do greater than or equal to, you're in a little bit of scary territory because that means you're actually defining a range that spans major versions, that might span breaks. And so now you know you need to be extra careful. And I knew Natalie was gonna be here and I was scared, so I actually wrote the code to make sure that the answer was correct for fear that she would call me out later. Um, so here's the next question. Let's say I depend on the foo package at that, and I do pub upgrade. 
And now no asterisks here. There's no other package that depends on foo, just this, just this one package. What version do I get? And here's one answer, so yell it out. 1.2. <clears throat> By default, when you're using the pub client, we won't get non-full release versions of a package. So even though this in theory would go get 1.3.0 full stop, it won't get the pre-release version. This way we make sure that when we go get in packages for you, we get you stable versions of those packages. And of course, you could always use a dependency override or be explicit and say, I want 1.3.0 beta or whatever if you're testing. Um, we're doing some of these tricks now with the Angular packages because we're pre-release. But in general, you'll only get stable versions. So if you do pub upgrade and you see that, oh, there's a, a version available and it's dash alpha something, you know why. So if you want to understand more about versioning in Dart, and again, if you're new to it, Semver is a great um, spec we try to follow. I would say there's one to-do in semantic versioning. We had an email exchange about this yesterday, which is they're vague about ordering intentionally. There are um, flavors of versions that the Semver spec says there is no known or no approved way to think about versioning these. And we think that's really broken. We actually think that determinism is kind of nice. So the way pub in implements uh, version ranking and ordering, we are deterministic. So we're a little bit off the Semver spec. Um, but every place in the Dart ecosystem where we handle versions, version solving, version ranges, all the ordering, it's handled by this package. And so if you're curious about how that works or how we, the small deltas we have from Semver, you can look at pub Semver. So that's the stuff in your pub spec. What about other files? There's a number of files we want. A lot of them are markdown files. Um, you have to have a readme. You can make it look pretty. I'll give you an example in a bit. Please have a change log. It helps keep a, people keep track of what you've done in your release. Um, even if you do a minor release for like internal plumbing reasons, just put a change log entry that says changed internal plumbing. Um, it's really helpful for folks to understand how things have changed. Um, if your code's on GitHub, please use a contributing.md file. This file will actually be linked anytime anyone opens an issue or a pull request, and it will tell them how to file an issue, what should be included in issues, what process should they go through when they do a pull request. Just a great kind of um, thing to do to encourage contributions. And recently, with the new pub role, we actually now support example files. So this is the simplest example, and there's a few other formats we support. But if you actually add an example file to the approved conventional example directory, we actually render that in a tab. So let me show you an example of that. So here is the uh, video player Flutter plugin slash package. A few things. You notice it has a great change log. Well done. It does not have a gratuitous and redundant changelog title in the top of the changelog file because we know it's the changelog. Yes, I'm digging at people who consistently add the changelog header to changelog files. You'll notice that in the versions tab, we show all the versions that have been uploaded. And look, they actually perfect correlation. They've done the work to make sure that everything's lined up here, except wait. Are they missing one? No, it looks pretty good. I think they did a good job. You'll see that the example file is rendered here. Um, with pretty code coloring, which is great. And really quick, let me just uh, go to the GitHub source, and let's look at the raw readme file. And these are a few little things that aren't discussed a lot. So use markdown syntax. Really try to use the triple tick syntax. Let me even zoom it in a little bit bigger. For some reason, people still like to use the four space indentation for code. One, keeping track of this indentation, and if you have code blocks, it's just a miserable thing to do. And then you can't specify the language. So if you actually do triple tick XML or triple tick Dart, you get pretty formatting, not only in, on GitHub, but also on the package site. So use triple ticks, please. So read the friendly manuals on <laughs> how to publish packages. Spend some time understanding versioning, format your markdown, and use examples. Now maintaining a package. Let's go look at uh, the video player one more time. Oops. Click on the link. There we go. So this is a new feature of the package site. I don't know if people have noticed this. Packages now have a score. Dun, dun, dun. So your score is comprised of three things. Your popularity, your health, and your maintenance. Popularity, I'm not going to tell you how we do it, because any system can be gamed. Um, all you can, the only thing you should keep in mind is the more people that use your package 
and depend on your package, the more popular your package will be. Health is basically a measure of mostly static analysis. So if you run Dart Analyze over your package, if Dart Analyze comes back with few or no warnings and errors, you have a higher health. We do run Analyzer in strong mode. And so if you haven't already enabled strong mode in your package, added analysis options, you should, because we're judging you on this. We want to encourage people to move to the future, move to Dart 2 in strong mode. And then maintenance is a number of other things around, do you have a change log? Let's see what else is in there. Change logs when I remember, how often have you updated your package? And actually, this is mostly around, if your package hasn't been updated, or in any package hasn't been updated over a year, you start losing points. And it descends to zero at two years. So if you haven't touched your package in two years, it'll have a maintenance of zero. So if you're looking to use packages, you should go look at these scores. Um, obviously, a package that is brand new might have, and make sure you highlight if it's been less than 30 days since it's been created. It might not have a lot of users, um, but you can also differentiate between a package that hasn't been updated in a year or two. We've been around for a long time. Every package ecosystem has a little bit of rot. We try to make sure that we keep you away from that. And obviously, when you search in the package site, we make sure that we basically rank not only by your search results, but also by a combination of these factors, so that we try to give you the best, not only a good match for what you gave, but a package that's high quality, popular, has been maintained. And one final note I wanted to bring up here is Pana. So we actually have a package that we publish called Pana. It's short for Package Analyzer. This is what happens when I name a package. Um, but it's the underlying infrastructure for how we measure health and some aspects of maintenance. So, one second here. You can install Pana. So if you go do pub global activate Pana, it'll install the Pana package. And then you can run Pana over a package you've yet to publish and figure out its score. There might be a few little nuances around Flutter packages. Try it out in Flutter packages. If you have issues, let me know. Um, one little interesting caveat is that we actually go in and we modify the pub spec file and your analysis file, um, just your public spec file, pub spec file on disk. Um, the reason we do that is we want to do, when we do version solving, we want to make sure that we don't factor in your dev dependencies in terms of what you depend on. Um, so you can turn off the no warning thing. Make sure your code's committed into Git before you do this. We'll clean up the file when we're done, but just FYI. Um, but this is a great way, before you publish a package, to see what would my health be. And again, if you're already using our tools, you're using you know, VS Code, Intel, you know, um, IntelliJ, you're running the formatter, you should be in pretty good shape already, but this will give you kind of a, a very um, long JSON output explaining exactly how we think about the health of your package. So, Beyond just general code on maintenance, you know, everyone makes mistakes. This is one of the reasons I love working in software is because issues like this, you can just do, okay, git, reset, head, and you can go back. Um, your boss doesn't need to know unless you published. Um, but you know, aside from obviously having a friend, someone to help you with code reviews and things, use the tools, test your stuff. Um, I get Natalie here, this is really just, this is, whole talk is an ode to Natalie. She did so much work here. Um, we have a great test package. We recommend you use it. It's the same test package we use for you know, low-level shared libraries and the web and on Flutter. It works really great. Use pub run test on the test package. We have static analysis tools that work great. Use the analyzer. We have a great formatter. You can run it in line. You can run it inside the editors. It works great. Um, just, well, and I'll talk about conventions in a little bit. Just like agreeing on formatting is so useful. I have yet to see anyone give me an example of a line of code that was like a bespoke formatting that was worth not being able to just not think about white space arguments and code reviews, right? No? Really? Come on, like no arguments about white space and like the times I spent arguing about white space and code reviews, like just use the formatter, please. Bob has better style than anybody here. Um, and once you have all those things goal, you have anal your analyzes, your test, then use continuous integration. We use a lot of Travis um, for Linux testing, and it supports some Mac. AppFair is available for Windows testing. It's really simple. Like, put that in a .travis file, you're good to go. And in fact, let me give you a demo real quick. So I have a package here called Peanut. Um, the trick is really fun, I think. It's, um, it will run pub build, or a pub build against a package on your system, on your disk, and it'll do the work to check out your GH Pages branch and commit everything to GH Pages, but you don't have to like check it out yourself. And then you can just push your GH Pages branch to GitHub and you have your GH Page thing. 
There's three people here who've done GH pages. And everyone else is like, what are you talking about? It's cool, trust me. Ask me afterwards. But I've yet to enable Travis um, testing on this, Travis. So let's do that quick. So you see I have source code here. I did increase my font size before giving a talk. Um, actually, even better, let me go to the console. That's better. Here is a Travis file. I'm just going to add to my repo. Before I add it to my repo, though, I'm going to enable Travis on the site. So basically, it's a find and replace, travis-ci.org. <coughs> You'll see Travis has not been activated yet for this package, so let's do that. Travis is enabled. A couple little tricks here that I really like. You can say only build if there's a Travis file, whatever. Um, this is something I've really pushed on the Dart team a lot, and I encourage you to do it. Travis now supports cron jobs. So it'll rerun the tests on the last master branch or whatever as often as you want. I generally do once a week. What's great about this is now, if you have, obviously you guys have dependencies on packages, likely. Those packages might be revving. You might say, I want to depend on the stable or the dev SDK. You know that Google is revving Dart often. And what this makes sure is, even if you haven't touched the package in a while, the test will be rerun. And if the Dart SDK has been updated, or any of your dependencies have updated, your test will still be rerun. And it's amazing, even those emails, like, oh, someone else you depend on has broken the, the version constraint contract, and now you know who to go blame. Um, but this actually tracks well what your users will go through as well. So use cron jobs in Travis, it's really nice. Then I can just go into here and go get push. In theory, I should do a pull request, but again, I have no one helping me with peanut. If someone wants to help me and be my friend of the peanut package, it'll be much easier. And let's push. Drum roll. Now if I go into Travis and I hit reload, and I hit reload. Ah, and there's the first build. Running the test for peanut on Dart stable and Dart dev. This is another great trick. You can, if you care about supporting older versions of Dart, you can specify the version ranges, which is really great. So that's Travis support. Again, there's great docs for Travis. If you just search for like Travis docs Dart, there's a great documentation about how that all works. <coughs> Excuse me. And besides that, we just have a great collection of tools. So our analysis also supports a number of customizable lints. There's the website for the linter. Philip, Phil has done a bunch of work on uh, the linter package. And these are great. This is like Dart formatting in my world, which is like, oh, you know, we care about if you order the, you know, the import directives. And you have some argument in the code review. Please order the, no, just have the linter do it. You know, you all, you're using single space, and really it should be double, or single quotes, you should be using double quotes. It's like, no, 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 like, we'll just use single quotes, that's the way we're doing it, and it'll just work. And so it really gets rid of a lot of those kind of arguments, and also just makes your code more consistent, and helps you find bugs. Like, we'll actually statically figure out if the regex you put in a string is a valid re regex, so you don't find out at runtime. Um, there are dozens of lints, they're being added all the time. Check out the linter. Um, isn't this the most fun error you get when you do pub? You don't get the latest version of Quiver, and you don't know why. Um, this drove me completely insane, and so I made a little tool to help with it. It's called PubViz. Um, basically visualizes your pub dependencies. It's also played to GraphViz, which is the technology I use here. And you get this crazy thing. This is why you get a 4K monitor. You can see it all. It works really nicely. So again, I talked about there's trade-offs. You know, inside Google, there's many articles discussing that. We have one version of every package, and it makes, it makes a lot of things easy and a lot of things really hard. And so obviously, in the open source world, you have to think about how version constraints work. It can be a problem. I think it's great because it enables an ecosystem that actually is based on knowing the dependencies you're using and having consistent dependencies. Um, but you can zoom in here. There's a zoom in button, so you can look to see how things work. You actually hover over on a package to see, oh, like who's using that? I print out in the console dump in the Chrome. You can actually go look and see uh, the output there, so you can figure out you know, what's used what and figure out why Quiver's not being updated to the latest. It works really nice. Um, a final idea for a tool, often we have constellations of packages. And so examples here are the build tool. We have a number of packages we want to work on together. We tend to rev them and work on them as one chunk. Angular is another example. We have the Angular compiler and forms and routing and the AST package. We bring these all in together. We want to manage these as one repository with one set of tests. Um, it makes things much easier. 
So again, we have a tool called monorepo. And what this helps you do is manage that set of, or that constellation of packages in one repo. And so an example of the command you can run is mono Travis. And what you do is you actually put a dot Travis file in each sub repo and you use the format I described earlier, analyze, test, you can customize it if you want. And then mono repo will go through and each subdirectory, the dot Travis files and create a, a global top level Travis file and a shell script. So it'll run all those packages as though they're each individually configured. So you don't have to become a bash expert to configure multiple packages in one Git repo, and it just works. And so we use this across a number of our packages. If you want to bait a mono repo and put a bunch of code in one repo but have separate packages, mono repo is a good helper. So that's is that maintaining. You know, you can look at your score on the package site and run panel locally to, before you publish. Make sure you test. We have a great test package for that. And Travis and other CI solutions are a great way to make sure you maintain. Uh, quality, and also it's a great way to help contributions because when they send pull requests, they get tested before they run. So like, I'm not gonna tell you what you did wrong, but go look at Travis, get Travis Green, then we'll talk. And of course we have a bunch of tools that'll help you along the way. So I want you all to go build Dart packages and Flutter packages, but build them great. And we give you a bunch of docs and tools to help with that. I know I've gone through a lot of content here. Don't worry, this video will be on YouTube. I will put uh, a link in the description below if you want to um, see links to the things I discuss, the tools I discuss here, um, and go build great Dart packages. Thank you. <laughs>